This is the first 6.1 video. We're gonna look at discrete and continuous random variables. We've got a couple new vocabulary words and one returning probability model we've seen before. It lists all the outcomes and the likelihood that they occur. Now, when we assign the outcomes a numerical value, that's when we start to call it a random variable. We'll, we'll look at a couple examples of that. A probability distribution of a random variable gives its possible values and their probability. So all three of these are quite similar, but a random variable, we're going to be assigning the outcome a number and the probability distribution will show the outcomes, the numbers and the probability of them occurring. Now we have two types of random variables. One is a discrete and one is a continuous random variable. Discrete random variables are variables that have a fixed set of possible values with gaps between them. Uh, for instance, if we were to assign, um, or if we rolled a die and we measured or counted the number of dots that showed up after we rolled it, that's an example of a discrete random variable because there are gaps between. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. You can list out all of the possible outcomes. Another example would be this example that we're going to look like we're going to look at here. If you were flipping three coins and we wanted to count the number of heads that was obtained. So we define the variable x because x could be it could be three or four different numbers. We could get zero heads, we could get one head, two heads, or three heads. So we say x is the outcome. Um, and then we list the probability of each of those occurring. So you can see the outcomes listed here and the probability of getting zero heads is one eighth because there are eight total outcomes and only one that has zero heads. So this is an example of a probability distribution of a random variable where it lists X and the outcomes and the probability of them occurring. The second type of random variable that's not discrete is a continuous random variable. And it's a variable that takes all values in an interval of numbers. The probability of a continuous random variable is described by a density curve. So the key is it, it could be an infinite amount of numbers. For example, if I randomly selected um, somebody in the United States and measured their weight, then there's an infinite amount of weights that they could have. I can't list all of them. And um, if, you, if you think about it, they could weigh 110 pounds or they could weigh 111. And there's an infinite amount of weights between 110 and 111. They could weigh 110.3 or 110.005 or 110.06532. There's an infinite amount. I hope you're seeing that. So continuous is when there's an infinite amount between some set interval. And that's why we use a density curve to represent continuous. We'll look at these more in the uh, next video. Discrete random variables, you can list all the possible outcomes. So what I first wanna teach you is how to find the mean of a discrete random variable. So this formula, it looks a bit overwhelming, but it's, it's really quite simple. And I'm gonna show you how to do it on the calculator as well. So if we have the mean, which is also called the expected value, it's the average value that will occur over many, many repetitions. So here is what a probability distribution looks like. It lists the outcomes and the probability of those outcomes. To find the mean, you multiply the outcome times its probability and add it to the next outcome times its probability and add it to the next outcome times its probability. That's what this is summarizing right here. X1 is individual one times the probability of individual one. X2 is individual two times the probability of individual two. So there's two symbols that you need to be aware of when we're talking about the mean or expected value, mu of X where mu says the mean and X identifies which random variable. E of X stands for the expected value and X is identifying which variable. Because with random variables, we are, we're not always gonna use X to represent the variable. It could be some other capital letter. Generally they're capital letters. So this is the expected value. Standard deviation is the next thing that you're gonna to have to be able to, um, to find. And the key with standard deviation is, we all know that it's the standard or it's the typical distance from the mean. But when we're working with random variables, we have to actually find the variance first. 
And you should remember that the variance, which the symbol we have for variance, one of the symbols is sigma, and then x identifies um, the random variable, but sigma squared. So if you look down here, you can see that standard deviation is sigma of x. So these two have a direct relationship where variance is just the standard deviation squared. So you'll see in a second that we're going to find the variance and then we're just gonna take the square root of the variance. So this formula, I'll run through it real quick and then I'll show you how to do it on the calculator. But what you have to do is you have to take the first observation and subtract it from the mean. This is finding the distance from the mean and then you're squaring that value and you're multiplying it by the probability of that value. And then you're adding it to the next observation minus the mean value is squared times the probability of that value occurring. This will give you the variance. The two symbols for variance are sigma squared or VAR of X. Finally, take the square root and you get the standard deviation. So this equation here is exactly the same as this. It just has the square root above it. So let's look at an example. It's probably a better way to learn it. In this example, we'll look at the first objective use the probability distribution of a discrete random variable to calculate the probability of an event. So in Indiana University, Bloomington posts the grade distribution for its courses online. Suppose we choose a student at random from a recent semester of this university's business statistics course. The student grade on a four point scale where A, it gets, a receives a four is a random variable with this probability distribution. So here is the, all the possible outcomes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, where 4 would be an A, B, C, D, and F. So write the event, the student got a C using probability notation, then find its probability. Before I write out the event that the student got the C, first, they haven't given me a variable to identify here or, or a letter to represent the variable. So first I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that X equals or represents the grade of a randomly selected student from this business statistics course. And now I can write out uh, with probably notation, the event that the student got to see. If this is a probability distribution, then two things must be true. The sample space or the probabilities of each of these must add up to one. So if they add up to one, I can use the complement rule to solve for the student getting a two because two represents the student getting a C because this is A, B, C. And there we have the probability that the student gets a C to be 0.138 because all of these should add up to one. Explain in words what the probability of X being greater than or equal to three means and what is this probability? So what this is saying is, what's the probability of randomly selecting a student that gets a grade greater than or equal to three? And three represents a B. So what's the probability of getting somebody, randomly selecting somebody that gets a B or higher? So it's the probability that a randomly selected student gets a B or higher. And if we look at the table, if they get a B or higher, that means they've got a three or a four, so we will add these two probabilities together. And we get a probability of 0.819. Find the probability of a randomly selected student scoring greater than a zero, but less than a four. So we're just going to add, could be a one, two, or a three. So we'll add these three probabilities together. And this would be the probability of getting a B, C, or a D, 0.532. The next one is a conditional statement that says, find the probability of randomly selecting a student they got a one, given that the student scored less than or equal to three. So here we're gonna have to actually use the conditional um, probability formula. From the conditional formula, we know that the numerator is the probability of X being equal to one and being less than or equal to three, divided by the probability of X being less than or equal to three. So the probability, this statement might be a little bit confusing. 
because you're finding the probability that x is equal to one and it's less than or equal to three. Well, if it's equal to one, then the probability of it being less than or equal to three is 100% because one is less than three. So for our numerator, we're really gonna look and see the probability of x being one is 0 0.032. So essentially it's 0 0.032 and this and means multiply. So really we're multiplying it by one, which we don't need to show because if x is one, then it is guaranteed to be less than or equal to three. So really we don't need to show this multiplication, but it's there um, if you wanna see it. And then in the denominator, we need to add up all the ways x could be less than or equal to three. And so the probability of it being one, given that it's less than or equal to three is 0 0.0589. Now this is the way we can do it using the conditional formula, but there is another way you can just think about it here. If you look at the table, Basically what they're saying is we know that it's less than or equal to three. So we know it's one of these outcomes here. So we can just take, if it's one, one divided by all of these will give you the probability of it being one given that it's less than or equal to three. So that's another way you could think about it where it'd be 0 0.032 divided by the sum of each of these values, which is what we had using the formula down here.